So for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, I've been freelancing with different media projects. Gosh, this screen is quite hard to see. No idea where the mouse went, there we go. Um, yeah, and I've worked with different companies around the world, um, different nonprofits, brands. Um, I have a UNICEF conference coming up that I'm filming, that sort of thing, um, helping people to tell the stories uh, using video, essentially. Um, as she mentioned, I'm doing my master's at LSE right now, uh, focusing in the dissertation on the role of visual media in post-conflict reconciliation. Uh, so when I was doing research to write a PhD proposal, I came across this conference. I was really interested because it's very much within my uh, area of study. And another thing that I came across was this organization down the street from me in London called the Oxford Research Group. And a, a professor academic who runs the Oxford Research Group called Chris Langdon. Uh, and he has a, a small side project that he's working on, which is very new, called Reconciliation Through Film. Uh, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. So as a sort of disclaimer, I don't officially work for them or anything like that. He's a friend. Uh, we had a really long conversation where he was sort of um, asking my advice on some things and we were consulting together about the concept because it's, it's a very new concept, using film in post-conflict reconciliation. That's sort of what the conference is about, I guess. Um, anyway, this is the website, Reconciliation Through Film, and one of the things Chris did ask me is if I could share it around with people and tell them about it. And so I'm up here sort of to start a discussion for a few minutes. We're going to watch the... Uh, trailer is probably a bad word for it. It's like a pre-cut to describe the documentary project rather than <laughs> a typical Hollywood theatrical trailer which shows you clips of the film. It's going to have a little bit of the raw footage and a little bit of a, a sort of precursor explanation. Anyway, um, without further ado, let's see if I can get this. Ah. That is, it's moving every time I click it. There we go. Hopefully there's sound as well. Okay, I know. Oh, the sound don't control. worry, yeah. don't worry. Yeah, it's Everything's it's under control. <laughs> okay. that up because I want to encourage you to go to that website, um, check it out. I think there's contact information on there to reach out to them directly. Um, you could also email me and I'd be very happy to pass on your thoughts or comments. Um, but if you don't mind, I just wanted to get some reactions from people on what you saw, what they're talking about in terms of using film to help the reconciliation process. You don't have to know very much about the conflict in Sri Lanka, I think, for it to be a relevant discussion. So I was just wondering yeah, if we could get some feedback. Uh, what did you think? Who would like to go first? Uh, what 
artist depicting this and making it known and spreading it around? Like, what kind of consequence uh, do they want to do they want to get? Like, do they want like foreign help? Do they want to spread it in the world? But like for the people who are leading this war, or the people who are getting you know like displaced and everything, um, what does it make that they're documenting them and documenting? Uh, they're suffering and everything, like concretely, like what is the aim in Texas? Like in concrete terms, how does it sure. In, I think, although this isn't necessarily question and answer, I can tackle that a little bit. This, um, this footage is primarily from after the war. Uh, the war is finished now, uh, it was a couple of years ago. Um, so it's definitely in the post-conflict environment that they're working. And this, uh, this project is partially run with this organization, Reconciliation Through Film, but it's combined with uh, local religious leaders and local filmmakers to develop a process, maybe you've heard of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, in South Africa and then in Rwanda they, they used a similar project. Um, it's, it's oriented in that way to, I think, pre uh, present a public forum for healing and discussion after war. So. I'm probably putting words in their mouth if I go much further, but my thought on the whole idea is that often we talk about visual media as being very powerful in a negative way. And we say, you know, how destructive certain representations can be. Um, but we don't flip that around. If media, visual media has inherent power, then it also has the inherent power to build positively in the same way that it could destruct negatively. So that's why I started researching it. And when I found these guys, I was very impressed. Um, in, in that sense that they're trying to use visual media and representations of people and lifestyles to show that they can coexist peacefully, um, for example.